I'm so excited. My technicians, they're so good to me. Uh, they know just how to get to a girl's heart around here. Bugs. This is a beautiful, um, kind of flabbergasted. This is a beautiful imperial moth. Their wingspan goes from three to seven inches. Uh, you guys, maybe you've seen it before, maybe you haven't. Uh, they're very docile. They're, it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to do anything to you. I mean, this guy is holding me. He's letting me be with him right now. He's not trying to escape. He's not trying to fly off. I don't have him fixed there. I'm not, I'm not doing anything to keep him there. He's not doing anything to me. He's not hurting me. Um, they're coloring... Uh, will a lot of times dictate whether it's a male or a female. The darker ones generally tend to be a male. You can also identify them by antennas, which unfortunately during capture he lost his. Um, and also by a little spot down here on the underside, I was able to identify him as a male. At this stage, um, the adult stage mainly, uh, they don't live very long. It's pretty much for mating purposes. They don't eat. Their coloring is to blend into the leaves so that they're not seen by birds and things of prey. Uh, they come out around sunrise and generally mate after midnight. It's believed that the males are more common or at least more commonly seen because the females tend to stay more towards the trees that they're going to lay the eggs on, which is going to be like pine trees, maple trees, oak trees, because the eggs which will hatch will be caterpillars, if you will, um, the larva and stars. They have five stages of those quote-unquote caterpillars. Um, and then they go into a pupa stage, which could look like uh, what we would consider a cocoon. Uh, and before they finally turn into one of these beautiful, absolutely stunning large moths. So if you see them around, they're not butterflies, but they're not going to hurt you. And if you're lucky enough and you're real careful and you're nice, one might just hold you. Look at them. Now, I'm not a small person. You know, I'm not, obviously, I'm stout but when I mean small I'm about six foot so I have large hands and this let me just try to grab something in comparison so you can see how big this little fellow really is as a business card and this is how big this beautiful imperial moth is just stunning so thank you my technician for bringing, finding this and bringing it to me. I will be, after this impromptu bed, or bug minute, be really re-releasing him back outside so that he can go do what nature intended. But I really wanted to share this beautiful moth with you guys in the event that you haven't seen one. Or maybe you saw it but it flew away before you could get close enough to appreciate all of God's beautiful creatures. Look at him. Look at the, the markings on his underside, even on his body. Those are what they have on them when they're in the um, larva state as well, the caterpillar state. They have those same type of markings, those dots. Now I'm going to try one more thing to show you how you can identify the female from the male if you're not sure by the antennas or the coloring. It'll be so nice as to let me. And he's going to down here. Let me just see. Let me get, there we go. Down here where my thumb is. See that really pinkish area that almost goes from one end to the other, well, side to side, I should say, uh, that is a male. On a female, it'd be down just slightly by hair. It would be just a, almost a tiny little dot, and it would be a lot darker, like a dark brown or a black color. And you can, even still on this underside, just absolutely beautiful marking. 
So, there you are, guys. An absolutely beautiful Imperial Moth for your viewing pleasure. And of course mine. Who am I kidding? There you go. So if you see him around and you're curious, you just kind of nudge your hand up underneath him real like that and then just climb right up on you. Just be nice and let him go after. Have a great day, guys. Hope you enjoyed the Imperial Moth.